Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you what I think is the best way to make a portrait out of text. All the examples I've seen on the internet just gray out the words in the midtones like this version. However, in this image, all the words are black, including in the midtone areas. And not only that, you can also mix fonts and sizes while maintaining all the correct tonal values of the portrait. I'm even going to show you how to add color. So let's begin. The image size I'm working on is 800 by 800 pixels with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. If you're starting with a color photo, desaturate the color by pressing Ctrl U or Command U on a Mac. When the hue saturation window opens, just slide the saturation to zero, then you're good to go. This text effect generally works best with white around the portrait, so I would make a selection around the head, cut it out from its background, and place it on its own layer. I won't be covering the steps to do that in this tutorial in order to save time. The first thing we'll do is go to Select and choose Color Range. The Color Range window will open. Click on the arrow next to Sample Colors and choose Shadows. Press OK and then click on the New Layer icon. We want to fill the selection with black, so press Alt-Delete or Option-Delete on a Mac. We'll rename this layer Shadows. Now click on the photo of Abe to make it active, and then go back to Select and choose Color Range again. This time choose Midtones. Click on the new layer icon, and then press Alt-Delete or Option-Delete on a Mac to fill the new layer with black. We'll rename this layer Midtones. We're going to start setting our type now, so hide the Abe layers and click on the bottom layer to make it active. We're going to make a text block which confines the text to an area we determine. So click on the text button, go up to one corner of our document and click down with your mouse or pen and drag down to the opposite corner. By doing this, we're telling Photoshop to fill this entire area with our text. In the example we're doing today, I'll be filling the area with a bunch of jumbled text. This kind of text is called lorem ipsum. I'm using a website that generates this kind of text. So I'll open up my browser, and I've already typed in the address. Of course you can always create your own block of meaningful text that associates the person in your portrait. You just have to type in your text inside the text block. In the words field, I'm going to type in 2000 and click generate. Then I'll click on the select all button, then press control C or command C on a Mac to copy the text. To choose your font and size, open your text dialog box you should choose a font that has at least two different weights. For my shadow layer, I'm using Arial Black at a four-point size. In the Paragraphs tab, click on the last box, which ensures the text to be justified on both sides. Click anywhere inside the text box and press Ctrl V or Command V on a Mac to paste the text in. To accept it, press on the little arrow at the top or just press Enter or Return on a Mac. We'll rename this text block Shadows. We'll make a copy of it, so we'll drag it to the New Layer icon. Then we'll hide the bottom text block by pressing on the eyeball. We're going to choose our text for the midtones now. Because midtones are lighter than shadows, we'll choose Arial Regular since it's a lighter weight than Arial Black. We'll rename our midtone text block Midtone. Since we don't need the photo of Abe anymore, we'll move it down to the bottom. We'll press the eyeball back on the midtone portrait and we'll hide the midtone text. We'll click back on the midtone portrait to make it active. Press Ctrl or Command A and then Ctrl or Command C to copy it. We're going to apply the midtone portrait to the midtone text. Press on the eyeball of the midtone portrait to hide it, 
and then make the midtone text active. Click on the layer mask icon and then hold down on Alt or Option on a Mac and click on the layer mask. Press Ctrl V or Command V on a Mac to paste the midtone portrait onto the layer mask. We'll get rid of the selection. Press Ctrl or Command D. We need to invert the layer mask, so press Ctrl I or Command I on a Mac. Now this is where the magic begins. Once you press on the eyeball, you can now see the text through the white areas of its layer mask, which are the midtones of Abe's portrait. We're going to repeat the process for the shadows. Make the shadows layer of Abe's portrait active. Press Ctrl or Command A to select it and then Control or Command C to copy it. Hide the layer and then click on the shadows text. We'll make a layer mask for this text block so click on the layer mask button and then press and hold Alt or Option on a Mac as you click on the layer mask. To paste the shadow areas of Abe's portrait into this layer mask press Control or Command V. Press Control or Command D to get rid of the selection. Once again, we need to invert the layer mask. To do this, press Ctrl-I or Command-I on a Mac. Once you make the text visible by pressing on the eyeball, you'll be able to see the shadows as text. So what we have are two separate live, fully editable text layers. And we can change each of them independently of each other. We can change any aspect of the text, including the font itself. For example, let's just change the point size to 6 points. Instantly, we see the text block reflect that change. I'll press Ctrl Z to undo it. We'll click on the mid-tone text block to change that. We'll go to the character box and change the point size from 4 points to 3. The mid-tones appear a bit lighter now since we reduced the size of the font. I'm going to show you now how you can add color to your portrait. We need to take a composite snapshot of Abe as we see him, so press Control shift alt e or Command-Shift-Option-E on a Mac to place him on a new layer. Press B for your brush tool and then go to Mode, where you'll change it from Normal to Color. Click on the foreground color box and let's choose Red. Using color mode will allow you to change black to any color you want without affecting the white areas. You could also change the colors of the portrait by using gradients. Click on the gradient button on the left, then click on the gradient box at the top and that will open up the gradient editor. Let's choose this ultra colorful gradient so you can see that all colors will show up perfectly as long as they're in color mode. If it's on any other mode, go up to Mode and change it to Color. With your mouse or pen, go to the top of the image, click down, drag it to the bottom of the image, and release. Have fun making your own portraits made up of text that you write. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.